Yo, yo, I'm gonna teach you guys how to make this hair simulation. I based it off kind of looking like an Apple ad. I just used a cube for the object. You could make this a perfume bottle or an object of any sort. Okay, so we're just gonna start off here with a cube and I'm gonna scale it down and then stretch it on the X axis just to make it longer. And I made it around four times the length of a normal cube. Then I'm just gonna add a couple loop cuts in here and then apply the scale. And I'm gonna add a hair particle system. Click hair and you'll see now each of the faces on that cube will all emit hairs. And then you're gonna to wanna to click advanced here, check hair dynamics and go down to the physics and turn the brownian up to 0.3. And then you wanna go into the render in the viewport display and just turn the steps up to six. That works good for me. You might be able to go a little bit higher, a little bit lower. Just play around with it. And then you're gonna to wanna to go into interpolated children and just add 10 for the render. And then last, you're gonna to wanna to go into the field weights and turn the gravity down to 0.11. This is just gonna make it a little bit slower. So let's see now when we play it, all the hair moves around, but it's kind of boring, so we're gonna add a force field. Just, just gonna add a turbulence here and bring it down. And then I'm gonna change the strength to 10, the size to five, and then I put the noise amount to 0.5. Then I'm gonna add a wind and scale it up just so I can see it a bit. In the strength, I'm gonna to put to six and the noise amount, I put to 0.5. So see now when we play it, all of them actually move up and they're kind of waving around. There's a couple other things you can do. You can play with the curl settings and the roughness for the hair and that can make them more frizzy or more curly. But just keep in mind, whatever you set them to, the way that they look, they won't have their own physics really. You can see here, they kind of stay curved. So just for this example, I'm just gonna leave them flat. And then for the collider object, I'm gonna add in a cube and then just scale it up on the Z axis to make it a rectangle. And I'm just gonna bring it back a bit and I'm gonna set a keyframe, go up around 100 keyframes and bring it right over the hair and then set another keyframe for the location. So now when we play it, it'll look like it's moving through it, but it's still not colliding. So we're gonna wanna add a collision modifier on that cube. Okay, so it'll be pretty laggy if you haven't baked it. It won't be laggy once you actually bake the cache for the hair simulation. It's almost plays in real time after that. But when you're changing all the hair lengths and the collision, it will be laggy. There might be a few hairs that do pop through the object. You can see on the bottom there. The way I fixed that was just playing around with the seed value for the hairs. Also in the viewport, they'll look like they're going through the object a lot more than they do in the render view. So you'll just have to switch between the two. Next, I just added in the camera and I tracked it to the object. So you can see now in the rendered view, the hair is pretty thin. I want it to be a bit thicker. So how we're gonna do this is go to the hair settings and scroll down till you see hair shape. And then I'm just gonna turn the diameter scale up to 0.06. So here you can see they're a bit thicker at the bottoms. Now how you bake the simulation is just scroll up to the top of the particle settings and you'll see a bake key. You just wanna click the bake key. Okay, so you can see after baking it now, it almost plays in real time for me. And then for the lighting, I just added a plane in the background with an emission texture and I put the strength of that to two. And this just gives it a little bit of light and also makes it a white background. For the material, you can do really whatever you want. You can play around with the roughness or the metallic or whatever. Just keep in mind if you do do transmission or you add an ambient occlusion, it will up the render time or even the preview for it just because there's a lot that it has to calculate. But I started playing around with a couple of the color settings for ambient occlusion and I liked it. So I just went with it and I ended up just going with the transmission too. But you can see some of these shots look really nice. It was a little bit dark in the middle, so I ended up adding an area light too, just to brighten up the center of it. So that's pretty much how I made this. If you guys have any questions, just put them in the comments and I'll try and answer them. And I'll see you guys in the next video.